options, options, options. I'd argue having a 70 to 200 is like essential in a photographer's lineup of lenses. So today we're gonna to talk about why I bought a 70 to 200 F4. On most systems you'll find a plethora of options when it comes to this kind of focal length. Personally I was waiting for the Sigma 70 to 200 f2.8 version but the laws of what I needed versus what exists came into it and Covid finishing and me really wanting to get something for uh, this focal length. So why not the Tamron f2.8 70 to 180 isn't it? Yeah it's not quite 200. But Let's take a look. We'll see why I picked this F4 Sony version over all the other options that are available. Not a mad amount of options, but over the main ones, the main contenders for semi-pro photographers. Firstly, the basics. The F4 Sony 70-200 is in the smallest of those lenses in the Sony category. Um, in that exact focal length of 70 to 200. At 840 grams, I still think the weight and size of this lens with the features that it packs into it make it well worth it. Conveniently, the week that I'm shooting this video, I've been asked to go and shoot a marathon. Well, not a marathon, four marathons in four days in the wonderful Inishon Peninsula here. So it's the Extreme North Quadrathon is on. I've taken this thing out last weekend with me to shoot all the runners in the amazing scenes of Donegal. So welcome, we've got the camera, we've got the lens. Uh, this is a couple of days after the uh, quadrathon shoot that I was doing. Uh, I'm actually up here, literally, I like to come out sometimes and just park up somewhere and edit. It's nice, especially when you've got like amazing scenery like this. But we're going to talk about the things that I like about this lens, why I'm happy that I bought it, and a couple of the reasons that I may not be overjoyed with this lens. Things that I would just advise people to keep an eye on whenever they're uh, buying theirs. This is why you come to these places so that you can edit with a view like this. So, first off, we're going to talk about the convenience of these things. They're not small lenses. As you can see, this thing is a... Uh, I think I calculated as a 277D tall, so 280D cameras, which I always feel like is a very good way of measuring things because uh, the 70D feels like a generically mid-sized DSLR camera, would be the way I put it. So bluntly, there's four things that I absolutely love about this lens. I'm just gonna go straight through them from the start. Number one's the build quality. Number two is the sharpness. Number three is the all-in-one construction, which kind of falls under build quality, but I, I really like that. And then number four, which was the thing that pushed me over the edge in buying this thing, uh, it's the image stabilization or the optical steady shot, as Sony call it. So for the build quality, the whole thing is got a metal construction, so it's really solid. It's weather sealed, uh, so none of that dust or water's getting in there. So that's, you know, really good pluses then. I feel like this thing is built to last or built forward tough as they say. I feel like I'm not going to be able to do anything to destroy this lens as long as you take take a little bit of care. The same amount of care that you would take with a baby. You know, not dropping it. <laughs> what did surprise me though was the sharpness. As I did say earlier in the video, I've never really had anything this long that's been this sharp. Um, a lot of the time I feel like the lenses that I've had previously, once you got up to that 300 millimeters, they just fell apart. The all-in-one construction, so you zoom, you can see here, nothing gets longer, nothing gets shorter, it all just stays within this little body. Same with focusing, there's no real uh, extension on the tube and it's really nice because with this all-in-one construction it means you're not going to get anything getting in behind the lens. Now I have a Sigma art lens that I use and it's got like a little bit of an extension and there are times now I am seeing there's little bits of dust it's just in behind the front elements. It happens there's nothing you can really do about that uh, but for this it means uh, I really don't need to worry about that especially when I'm outside and I do a lot of photos at the beach so sand just gets everywhere. I hate sand. And the last thing um, that I love about this lens is the optical st uh, 
optical steady shot i was going to mix that with image stabilization because every other brand calls it image stabilization but sony optical steady shot as you can see right here they have it noted so Optical Steady Shot was probably one of the reasons I picked this over the Tamron. Um, I do some video stuff and I felt that like I would get more of a benefit out of the Optical Steady Shot than not having it or having f2.8 because a lot of my shooting is outdoors anyway so low light isn't the be all and end all for me. One of the nice things I did read about this in some other people's reviews, I haven't gone into that much in depth on this but the light transmission on this is very similar to the Tamron anyway, this at f4 from what I've read is very similar to the Tamron at f2.8. So I thought, hey, when when I get the steady shot, I may have to pay a little bit more, but it works for me. And then as well as that, you get the extra 20 millimeters out of it as well. There is two modes. There's one for panning and one for just general, like, oh, steady the shot up. Love them, absolutely fantastic. Now, um, before I go on to the negatives, let's uh, get out of the rain or go somewhere that there is less rain. <laughs> So, we are back home. Um, the rain is coming down like in buckets now. So, our, the Irish summer is officially over. Uh, but I thought I would go on and we'll talk about some of the negatives, the downsides. As with anything, nothing's perfect. So, so I do have two issues uh, that I don't like about this lens. Two things that um, they are kind of more minor than anything, really. Uh, the first one is these buttons. Although the build quality is amazing, these buttons are too easy to um, flip. All of them suffer from this issue. You can accidentally knock them off something. I've turned the nut, I can't count how many times I've turned off autofocus on this. Either putting the lens into a bag or having it slung on my on my side while I'm on a job. And I pick the lens up to get a quick shot and autofocus is off. Not, I, I, I would say not life altering, but it has helped me miss a few shots. Uh, so that's a big thing. Um, I'm not sure what this is like on the newer lenses, if it's a case that these switches have been updated or that, but um, yeah, that's, that's an issue. Like even like this cheap 50, nifty 50, like you can even hear that, like that's massively different. Um, and secondly, I've had some issues with autofocus on this lens uh, when it comes to items that are really far away, <clears throat> far away with uh, mostly in like hazy situations. And I can understand how hazy situations may affect the autofocus on a lens, but I've never had those issues on this lens uh, shooting at 70 mil. Now I've done the exact same shot where I've pushed the Sigma art lens to 70 mil and tried to shoot the same shot. I didn't have any issues with uh, autofocus at the same aperture. Whereas with this one, it hunted a little bit. So I did have, a little bit of frustration with that. Let me know what you think about this 70 to 200 f4 and would you go for it or would you choose something else? And why would you choose something else? Um, I'm happy with my purchase. I'll be sticking with it for uh, the foreseeable future anyway. It'll do some weddings for me. It will do any of the outdoor stuff that I've got. Other than that, if you liked the video, leave a little like. Comment below uh, as well uh, your opinions and sub if you want to see more uh, i'm enjoying the feedback that i'm getting from loads of you guys and these videos are hella fun to make and uh have a good one <laughs>